on this lovely sunny day. I'd just like to share with you because I'd love to do it in real time with you here but owing to the situation we can't. So I just wanted to show you some of the lovely spring that's happening here at Lambourne. Just behind me is one of our apple trees alive with blossom and all of the amazing insects that are pollinating our trees. The insects fortunately don't understand social distancing so they're all working closely together to pollinate our trees. When they're successful, in a few weeks time, the, the petals will drop, leaving us with little fruit buds, and they'll turn into wonderful apples in the autumn so we can celebrate our harvest. It's also, for me, it's a sign of hope that despite how miserable things are for some people at the moment, these trees and nature carry on regardless, giving us a beautiful display and a load of fruit at the end of it. So that's the apple blossom and we're going to go and look at some other trees and other plants around the site. Right, this one behind me, this tall thin tree, is, what, is a yew tree. It's about the only one decent sized yew tree we've got on site. Again they've got amazing history. They go back to the pagan times where they were venerated and worshipped. And most churchyards have got yew trees in them. So they're very uh, traditional trees. One of the main things they made from them were longbows. So the archers that beat the French at Agincourt, Henry VIII's uh, warship, the Mary Rose, had lots of bows stored in the bottom of it. Those bows were incredibly powerful. Just over there we've got our own archery range and we use bows and arrows here and some of you may have done an archery session here which is quite fun but the most powerful bow we have is 22 pound so it takes 22 pound of energy to pull the bow back the ones on the Mary Rose they were 160 pound there's very few people around today strong enough to pull one back and fire it they could get five arrows in the air within a minute those poor French didn't stand a chance. So the wonderful yew tree, lots of uses, lots of culture, lots of history. And the berries though are very poisonous, so be careful. This is one of my favourite trees on site. It stands, um, stands in a lovely position right next to our events field. So everybody can walk past it and see it. It's getting on a bit now, it's getting a bit old. It's also had a, an injury. Um, a few years ago, it lost one of its branches. You can see the big hole behind me. And the branch is still here. It's still being used for other things. This tree uh, is full of nooks, crannies, crevices, wrinkles. It's been weathered. I mean, I personally, I think old trees are far more interesting than young ones just because of all that wonderful um, age and weathering it's got. When, it's not that I'm biased, but young trees are okay. I mean, they're flexible, they've got a future, but the old trees, you know, they've just got so much more wisdom and knowledge and experience. And I know this tree is old because there's a way of aging the tree. I just happen to have a tape measure. Any tree, if you're lucky enough to go out and find a tree when you're allowed out for your exercise, if you measure it around, all the way around, in centimetres, divide it by 2.5, that will give you a rough age of the tree. This one is over 180 years old, so we've just measured it and checked it. Just imagine how much that tree's witnessed in 180 years. If it could tell stories, it would give you such a historic timeline of events. Even just 70 years ago, which in the age of this tree is only about a third of its life, it would have looked over that way to the south and seen the fires above London during the Blitz. Before that, it would have witnessed the volunteers from local volunteers going off to fight in the First World War. Go beyond that, it has seen so many things. So, you know, if you'd like to do a little bit of research, get a historic timeline out, do it on the internet, and see what else this tree might have witnessed in this part of Essex over the last 200 years and see what you come up with. There's also loads of other stuff you can do with oak trees. 
It's an amazingly good habitat. It hosts over 2,000 different types of creatures. Not just above the, my head in the canopy and on the leaves, but under the soil. There's miles and miles of roots. And on those roots, there's mycelium and bacteria all living underneath that help keep the tree alive. So, and there's some special things that live on trees like this, an acorn comes from this. So from little acorns, big oak trees grow. There is a thing that can damage the oak trees. It's called the oak the progressing green moth, I can't say it. And that moth has been a bit of a problem in some places and we have had to have some of our trees sprayed to keep them protected. There's another weird creature called a, an oak wasp and they lay their eggs into the soft wood of the oak and the oak tree reacts in its defence. It swells up and covers that swelling. They're called galls, G-A-L-L. -L, and it covers them with, makes a hard surface. The little wasp egg in the middle of the gall will develop and grow and eat the stuff in the middle of it and then work its way out. And when it comes out, it hatches into another wasp. So those little round balls you see on oak trees, they're called galls, they can be used for different things. There's one that can be ground up, mixed with water, into a paste with a bit of iron in it, and it makes an amazingly strong ink. If you know a little bit of history, if you've heard of the Magna Carta, that document signed by one of the kings to allegedly start a bit of democracy in this country, but it's only if you're rich and a landowner. But the document was written using gall ink onto vellum, which is calfskin. And that ink is still good today. You can still read that document, which is pretty cool. The bark can be used. You can take the bark off, soak it. It's used for tanning in the leather industry. It's, there's so many different things. And if you think of all our wonderful old buildings, from fantastic old farm barns right the way through to the cathedrals, most of them are held up with oak beams. The Tudor houses, the timber framed houses, that was oak. And even if you get a chance when this is over to walk around London, on the banks of the Thames, some of it's held up with great big oak beams that hold up the side of the Thames because oak doesn't rot very quickly in water. So it's an amazing tree. We just moved over from uh, the oak tree over to this one behind me, which is one of our elder trees. Some people think they're trees other than they're bushes. Maybe they're a small tree or a big bush. But they're another fascinating plant. At the moment, they've, the blossom is just coming out on it. Really useful. You can make wonderful elderflower champagne. It's really easy to do. Get a few heads of the blossom, stick it in a bucket with some lemon and sugar and add some water, leave it to ferment, and the natural yeast will turn it into elderflower champagne non-alcoholic well not much really tasty though but the elder's got all sorts of other stories with it the last part of its latin name is judas and that was because it was believed that judas hung himself on an elder tree hence it got that part of the name now personally i think unless judas was a real lightweight he couldn't have hung himself from an elder tree because they're not very strong the branches are really brittle so brittle in fact that they snap quite easily but they have been used for making whistles and pea shooters because it's easy to hollow them out <coughs> there's other stories about the elder as well you must never burn elder indoors because when a witch or an old evil hag dies her bad spirit goes into the elder and if you burn it you release that spirit and it can make you really sick now, personally, I don't believe in old witches. Well, having said that, there was somebody I went out with I wasn't sure about, but that was a long time ago. The truth is scientific. We like science. We live so in a so-called rational scientific age. They now know that in the bark of the elder is arsenic, which is a nasty poison. If you burn it and inhale the smoke, it will make you sick. Nothing to do with spirits, more chemistry. So that's one part of the elder that uh, you want to be very careful of. Later on, when the blossom goes back, you get the elderberries. Elderberry wine is also quite good. You can make um, 
ketchup with it, you can make jams with it or part of it with jams. So all in all, the elder can give us quite a few things including some interesting stories. So we like the elder, get a chance. Even if you can't make it yourself, if you're out in the shop, um, elderflower cordial is available now in all sorts of supermarkets. Have a little taste, it's a really nice drink. Especially in the summer with some ice and lemon. Okay, that's the elder for you. Hey, um, just to finish off with, these are a different type of tree. These are our young ash trees. Young, nice enough trees, not as much fun as a good old oak, but they're, they're okay. So wherever you are, there's plants out there that are really interesting. Most of the trees, the plants, they've all got their own culture, history, magic, myth. There's just tons of stuff around that can be interesting. If you've got a smartphone, mine's not, mine's clever, but it's not smart. So if you've got a smartphone, you can download an ape that will be able to identify plants with. Take a photo of the plant, put it onto one of these apps, and you should be able to identify the plant. Then do a little bit of research. Where did it come from? What's its history? What's its culture? Can it be used medicine for medicine? Can it be used for dyes? Can it be used for making food? Who knows? There's so many interesting things out there with the plants. Go out, have a look when you get chance. I know it's not that easy at the moment, which is why we really wanted to share some of this with you. But if you do get chance outdoors, have a little look. You might be surprised at some of the information you find. Okay, hopefully we'll see you all out here before too long. Bye for now.